video is an installment of Dancing with the Dark and we're up to Robert Block, not quite so pragmatic. Surely before we left for home, the Carlos invited Ellie and me to spend the day with them at their summer cottage near Liphook. They picked us up at the station and conducted a guided tour of the quaint little English village with Boris pointing out ye old this and ye old that and look, he exclaimed, there's ye old Woolworths. The remark was typical as was his warmth and lack of pretension, but for some odd reason Ellie was only able to address him as Mr. Karloff. Perhaps it was a carryover from childhood trauma after seeing the monster on screen. Call me Boris, he insisted, but fond of him as she was, to her there remained Mr. Karloff and Evie. While Mr. Karloff and I were occupied downstairs, Evie took Ellie upstairs for a thorough examination of the premises. Arthritic problems and a touch of acrophobia kept Boris grounded. Following luncheon, he and I repaired to the garden, which was bordered by a recently constructed wall. Boris had watched the work in progress and admired the handicraft of the artisan. Now that's a real contribution, he said. Long after you and I are dead and forgotten, that wall will still be there. Later, en route to the back to the station, the subject of mortality was touched upon again. Driving to town, Boris drew our attention to a house as we passed by. Something rather odd happened there, he told us. Odd, I said. Boris shrugged. Let's see what you make of it. According to his story, the Karloffs were acquainted with friends who knew the woman occupying the house in question. One afternoon, they came to call on her and were met at the door by a maid who invited them into the parlour until the lady of the house came downstairs. The maid left and the couple sat waiting. Perhaps five minutes passed before their hostess descended the hall staircase and entered the room. Halting there, she stared at them surprised. How did you get in here? she asked. The maid let us in. But I don't have a maid. Then who is that young lady? What young lady? I'm living here alone. At least that's what she thought at the time. But a visitor ha visitors had seen, heard and been admitted to the house by someone whose appearance both had agreed upon. Only later did they and their hostess discover that a girl answering to her description had met her death in this dwelling. A ghost, I said. Boris smiled. All I can tell you is that since then, others have encountered the young lady. Sometimes at night and sometimes in broad daylight. You've never seen her? His smile broadened. I'm not anxious to do so. As for me, I have never seen a ghost, though some years ago, author Charles Hyam entertained Ellie and me in a home once belonging to playwright Vicky Baum. Her apparition was apparently still in residence and we definitely felt an ex inexplicable chill which emanated from upper rooms which should have been sweltering in summer heat though we heard none of the noises which plagued Charles frequently he soon sought quieter quarters only in recent years have I ceased being quite so much of a pragmatic because I've encountered enough incidents of what you might call paranormal inexplic inexplicabilities to shake my composure I now feel that I don't know everything that there is to be known about the world and that the scientists who claim to know by means of mathematics and measurements and the ability to repeat experiments are constantly being confounded as new things come along that force them to review, revise their so-called laws and expand their horizons. To me, a mechanistic explanation is far too simple. I have no spiritual view that would coincide with the dogma of any organised religion. But I do believe that most of us are mindful of our own subjective definitions of good and evil. Most people have, even in the absence of a so-called conscience, knowledge of whether they are doing something that is harmful or helpful. I don't know whether any of the conventional legends and mythologies and superstitions coincide with my notion of what constitutes good or evil, although I've read and heard enough about seemingly inexplicable events in which some of these Concepts seem personified, cases of so-called possession, that sort of thing. I'm not saying that I'm still window shopping, but I haven't closed my eyes. And that ends that instalment of Dancing with the Dark.